Welcome to Kitty Nero Diaries. Uh, thanks uh, to those who've uh, recently been subscribing and commenting on my previous video. Really appreciate that. Um, so today I just wanted to talk about uh, some of the negative stuff that's um, been in the press again. I mean, you know, we're, what, three, four weeks into 2024 and uh, YouTube is um, flooded again with loads of anti-EV uh, videos. Um, which is what you expect, I guess. Um, you know, these guys have to make a living somehow, right? Um, but when it's the mainstream press coming into play, I think you do take it a bit more seriously. Um, so anyway, a couple of days ago, um, the BBC just did a quick two-minute video about the problems of EVs in cold weather. Now, obviously, the Northern Hemisphere is in winter and if you live in places like Central North America, Canada, Scandinavia, you're going to get very very cold temperatures. Not all the time but you know minus 20 to minus 30 and sometimes even worse is recorded there. You know people live at a constant sort of negative temperature for most of the winter. Now obviously you know living where I do in sort of central western France you know we don't really ever get snow. Um, it was minus three I think the other day when we were out it was nice and sunny but you know the car performs perfectly fine. So, But I'm not really in a position to comment on what it's like uh, to run a car in, say, Canada, where you know I wake up in the morning and it's been minus 25 overnight and I've got to start the thing. But there's plenty of videos around of EV owners in those countries um, at that temperature and lower who get out in the morning, they open the car, it starts, they use it, and they go to work or they take the kids to school or whatever it is they're doing. Um, so, you know, where, where's, the, where's the issue? There's the snow, the, the roads are covered in snow, it's piled up by the side, everything is icy, and it's extremely difficult to get your fossil fuel car started if you, unless your battery's really topped up properly, just to get them to turn over. So um, what are the BBC saying? Well, let's just look at the first 20 seconds or so of this two minute video. Electric vehicle owners are facing a whole new set of challenges as temperatures dip. The cold is affecting two crucial elements of the EV experience, the driving range and the charging speed. I've been here for over five hours at this point. And the reason for both? comes down to their power source. In, in the first 15 seconds of that BBC piece, um, we've seen you know people driving on very, very icy, frozen roads, very low temperatures they're talking about there. It's clearly an American report, um, or North American, you know, Canada perhaps as well. Um, and straight away they've said there's two problems. One is driving range. The other is charging, and then we hear the guy saying, I've been here for five hours. Now, that's all we hear. He doesn't comment anymore, this guy who's just stood there saying, I've been here for five hours. Now, we don't know if he's using an AC slow charger or if he's using a rapid charger that's running very, very slowly. Now, if it's the latter, even if it's a rapid charger, running very, very slowly. It's not going to take him five hours to charge his car. And then, of course, we don't know how low a state of charge he was starting at and how much he wants to put into the car. Because if he wants to go to 100% and he's on a rapid charger, he's just really not making good use of his time. And the other thing is, when it's really cold or really snowy like that, I, I certainly know if I lived there, I wouldn't be doing as much driving as I would normally be doing. I'd just be keeping it to the essential stuff that I need to do to get to work, get to the shops, or get the kids to school. So, you know, we don't really know what was going on there. Um, you know, if you don't know anything about EVs, you're thinking, oh my goodness, they're pretty hopeless in the cold weather, and that guy'd been there for five hours. Well, we don't know why. Why was he there for five hours? So anyway, let's go on and look at the next 20 second segment of the video from the BBC. Lithium ion batteries. Lithium ion battery. Lithium ion battery. Lithium ion batteries. Like all other batteries, they run on chemical reactions. The movement of electrons and ions from one terminal of the battery to the other. Chemical reactions happen faster when it's hotter and slower when it's colder. 
And since some of the car's battery power in the winter is being redirected to maintain optimal battery temperature and heat the car cabin, your EV's driving range could be reduced by as much as 25%. So what are they telling us there? They're, they're telling us lithium-ion batteries, lithium-ion batteries. And yeah, you could argue that this is fairly lazy reporting by the BBC, just pulling in a couple of sort of two-second clips from uh, American or Canadian, I don't know what they are, news channels um, talking about lithium-ion batteries. Well, what are they? Well, they're chemical reactions, a bit like human beings you know we're all chemicals and chemical reactions do happen slower in colder temperatures okay fine that's a nice bit of education there thank you bbc um and uh, and then they go on to say and and, and there's a very nice diagram there of, of a battery and a cathode and anode and electrons moving around and all that stuff jolly good um and then they say you could lose as much as 25 percent of your range and you go hang on a minute 25% of what? You know, my car in the winter, fully charged on a very, very cold day, is probably showing about between 380 and 400 kilometers. So, you know, I lose 25% of that and I've still got at least sort of 300 kilometers to play with, okay? Um, so, you know, how far do I want to go? And how far can I even drive at one sitting, especially when it's really adverse weather conditions? I mean, considering that I'm not going to drive for more than two hours or so anyway, certainly not in those conditions. So let's carry on and look at a bit more. The gold also affects the battery charge. Companies actually slow the charging speed of EVs, since charging your car when it's below freezing can make the battery unstable and more likely to fail. So much for bad news, but there is something that can be done. For one, taking fewer short trips. Each time an EV stops, it cools down and needs to be reheated when started up again. That drains the battery. Tesla also recommends keeping your car plugged in and retaining a minimum of 20% charge at all other times. And since warm batteries charge more easily, driving for at least 30 minutes before charging your car could speed up the process. Car companies are working on making electric vehicles more efficient in the winters. And in the end, perhaps what EVs lack in efficiency during cold spells, they make up for in environmental impact. So that's quite interesting. They're telling us that, uh, yes, there's some uh, loss of range uh, when it's really, really cold. No big news there. And then they're saying that um, the battery doesn't charge as fast. And of course, that's the battery management system protecting the battery uh, when it is very cold. But then it goes on to say some really strange things that uh, you shouldn't do short journeys, really, in, uh, in, a, in an EV because it can harm the battery. Well, I think that's very misleading. Um, I, I don't think there's anything to worry about for you know using an EV in freezing cold weather over short journeys. You're, you're not gonna do damage to the drivetrain as you would do in a petrol or diesel car. So anyway, at least they finish up by saying that the good point of EVs is that they're less damaging for the environment. Well they're a lot less damaging to the environment. That much is very clear. But I think it just goes to show that even a sort of, um, you know, I mean, I mean, let's face it, you know, the BBC are a very influential uh, organisation. You know, people trust the BBC. Anyway, um, I hope you found that interesting because uh, when something in the mainstream media comes up about EVs, I think it's worth taking a look and taking a view. So whether you think that was just lazy BBC journalism, they picked up you know, a few snippets of news from North America about the problems of running EVs in cold weather, which I can't see are any worse than the problems of running a petrol or diesel car in cold weather, even with uh, synthetic oils, uh, which they use now. Um, it, it's just such a faff to get them started so anyway um yeah thanks uh, again for watching so um yeah i'm going to be talking a bit more about the e nero uh certainly 
within the next six weeks or so, it's going to be five years old. So um, six weeks, yeah, middle of March. No, maybe a bit longer than that. Seven to eight weeks. I guess it's going to be uh, five years old. So we're going to be uh, talking about that. Anyway, um, so thanks again, uh, and until the next time.